sheep. And they are planting our little tiny baby clams. Yes. yes. And today these ones are really, really, really tiny. So all those little, um, you know, white or brownish dots, those are the little baby clams. Nice. And they're only, they're probably, I don't know, five or six millimeters long. So the last ones we planted were probably more the size of a dime. Uh -huh. So this time we're using a different way to protect them from predators because they are so small. So this is a nursery clam bag. So people that have been growing farming clams in the lagoon and over in Cedar Key, they use the same method um, because it encases the clams, you know, on both sides versus last time we just had the net that covered them on top. But this time we'll be able to protect them kind of from 360 yeah, degrees. To keep the yeah. crown conks from slip, slipping exactly. underneath. Exactly. Yep. So it's a big four by four foot uh, square bag. And today we'll be planting five of these. And each bag contains 10,000 clams. Oh, that's awesome. And they're small because you guys are trying to save money and use the most of your money so that you can grow more clams. Yes. So, um, you know, growing big clams aquaculturally is uh, extremely expensive. Uh, we want to support that industry, but at the same time, uh, for restoration purposes, if we can use restoration dollars to grow more clams by, you know, engaging the community to grow these clams when they're really, really small, instead of, you know, paying a farmer to do it. I, I hate to, like, we're not trying to cut out the farmers or anything, yeah. but um, if we can get more restoration. You're just trying to get more. And also, when, when this stuff grows in the lagoon, it's natural, so they grow better. Because in an aquaponic, it's a false natural environment so you have to do more to maintain the natural yeah, aspects some of, the farms of it and are it's probably you know, in other better. parts of the lagoon so farther north in mosquito lagoon or even in flagler county where here we're able to grow the clams you know in the water that they'll be finding their forever uh -huh. home in versus you know hundreds of miles away and it's expensive too because the spats like microscopic so they have they run through their filtration systems so they have to have special filters and everything else oh, yeah. or it they kills. Do. They it use kills. a couple stage um, grow out system. So they have what's called a nur the nursery where they actually spawn the baby clams and they'll grow them out from microscopic to a millimeter or so. And then they'll move them into what's called upwellers that are actually out in the lagoon. And it's basically a big floating platform that pulls water from underneath and allows the water to come up and recirculate. So they'll grow them out from a millimeter to this size in those upwellers oh, and then cool. they'll get out planted when they're about three to four millimeters um, into the the bottom bags these are called nursery bags so we'll grow them in these you can see they have about a two millimeter mesh size so we want the mesh small enough so the clams can't fit through but they can still fit their uh -huh. siphons up through so that, so they can breathe and, and feed that's awesome it has like a nice safety stitch on the end so that <laughs> should be pretty uh very secure. Pretty durable. Yep. Yeah. So after the clams grow for a little while, they'll get moved up either into a bag that has a larger mesh size or they'll just get released out into the open lagoon. They'll get spread onto the bottom of the lagoon if they're large enough. Cool. So you kind of, you um, size the, si the mesh along with the size of the clams and they grow into larger mesh as they grow bigger. And so this, um, the money that you guys um, are using to spend on these efforts comes from the swirl tax, right? So that, that half of a cent tax mm -hmm. is doing this. Absolutely. So yep. it's, you know, if you guys were wondering, you know, no one wants to pay extra t money in taxes, <laughs> but yeah, this is so a pretty good use of your money. So. A really small portion of that tax goes towards habitat restoration and community engagement in the projects. So this falls under our community collaborative project where we're growing um, resources to restore different Indian River Lagoon habitats like oysters, clams, and seagrass as well. So this is our first year where we've been able to incorporate clams into that project um, following a larger project where we planted over a hundred clam beds in the Indian River Lagoon through St. John's River Water Management District funding. So that was last year and we had a clam bed here and it did yep. really well. Yeah. So we decided that, you know, this is a good place to try and grow even smaller ones and pilot the new program as well. Yeah, and we'll take good care of them. Yes, we appreciate yeah, you guys. Absolutely. Thank you so much. So All right, well. We'll roll these bags out. You can see we have them already prepared and we try and distribute the clams throughout the bag so that they all have space. We're so gonna start that's the like four by four bag and we'll take this and we'll place it directly onto the bottom of the lagoon onto the sand. And then we'll uh, anchor it, it with these stakes to hold it in place. Awesome. Like right here, so, or should I back up a little bit um, more? I think 
this is good as long as we're not in the way of the habitats or anything. Okay, you guys can walk out here like it's not too yeah. late. Yeah, okay. nah. Alright, so we have three little boys that are happy to do it. <laughs> they want to swim. Lower this down to the bottom. It's chilly today. It is chilly. It was chilly warm. yesterday too. Nice outside, but in the water it's uh, kind of warm. That looks good to me. At least the sun shining. You do one yesterday. corner and then all to the other. Do you guys have to do it yesterday? No. Okay. No, yeah. Because yesterday was like there's no sun, you know. Oh, I know. Yeah. yeah. Yesterday would have been not not very fun. It was windier yesterday too. We're lucky uh -huh. today. The wind's coming like kind of out of the. I guess it was coming out of the north, but now it's kind of the south, but west. So this side of the lagoon is nice and calm. Uh huh. Yeah. Today's a good day on the river. Nice and clear water, you can see the net easily. It's cool. worked out that way. So looks like she's hammering those down with her little rubber mallet. So you're laying out five of these. We are, yeah. Oh, we and, have one and how many are in each one, you said? 10,000. 10, 10, Holy cow! Yeah! So you guys will have about 50,000. Holy cow! I had no idea we were going to get that many. That's so exciting. Heck yeah. brush that we brought with us today that we'll give you guys since you'll be doing all the maintenance on it yeah I have a brush I think we can keep and you can save that okay that yeah. works so it'll I still have be... my salinity reader too perfect so I don't need that either all right we'll just be brushing these to keep the algae off of them they're a little more finicky than the larger nets and the larger clams so you have to make sure that the top of that net stays because it's a smaller net exactly. a smaller hole so it's yes. it'll it'll collect more it'll more easily clog the algae as it grows on there it has the potential to clog it so okay. it'll take a little bit more maintenance to keep the top clear to make sure the clams can get their siphons up through the bag and continue okay. to, to feed and breathe well we can do it when we're doing all of our oysters too we have a lot of oysters we have how many habitats do you guys we have, have six six so they brought right. two over there on their dock and i told um hope that we never got them and we couldn't find them because they were out of town and we didn't know um and then uh we, i went to go get two more from her and then we came back and brent was like there's some cages hanging off over there i wonder if those are theirs or ours and they were ours so then oh, really? i got those and brought them back so we have six i think they accidentally went to the wrong address it was virginia <laughs> But anyways, we got them. Heck yeah, so now you guys got extra. Now we have a bunch, there. yeah. I don't know where it is. It's on the inside. This is the one you rolled up wrong. No, it can be either way. <laughs> and I think we have a total of eight habitats worth of oysters. And then with my bunk one, that's not really, I don't think that the, the spat really got on one of the bags. So we have like seven okay. growing. So I'm gonna redistribute them gonna to, like, so that they're kind of evened out. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna shake it out. They're making it. That's what we do to the oysters before we put them down, so it's nice and so the weight's kind of distributed. Yeah, yeah we want them nice spread out easily. so they. Oh, once we get them down to the bottom, all it's adjust. much harder. <laughs> it's on the bottom. They don't stay in a group when they're on the top. They don't stay separate. I'm sure like brushing them with the brush is going to make them kind of spread apart a little bit. Yeah. yeah. They must be, They so they still have a really hard shell at this point, right? Yeah, yeah they do. Is, but they're, they're, I would not step on top of them. Okay. I would try to avoid stepping on top of them because okay. they are still small. Okay. Um, but I guess once they... Would it be good to have like a walkway in between them? 
We can do a walkway. Maybe that's a good idea. Spread them out a little more. Like a, Just like, like a between the squares, yeah. have like a foot so I can walk in between and manage it. Sure. Maybe. Or we can leave. Maybe if we'll we do, do a second row out here. If we or like, yeah, if yeah. You, like do like a garden. Like a these can be all yeah. together and then have like a row right there. Yeah. That's yeah. Perfect. That's a good idea. Yeah. I think like I, they'll become bigger and they'll be fine to step on, especially the boys. Like they're little. So yeah, they're and it's gonna... on sand too, so it's not like stepping on them on yeah. a wood dock or something, you know. Yep. So here we are, um, it, it's about a week and a half since the team came and installed the clam bed here and we're, we're going to do some maintenance. Annalisa drew the short stick so she's going to do the maintenance today. <laughs> and she's not, she's not joking, she is doing the stingray shuffle. You got to kind of drag your feet. Yeah, you drag yeah. your feet across the bottom that way if, you, if there's a stingray hidden. Yeah. You're kind of poking them away. Yeah, you want to poke them. You don't want to step right on them. So, yeah. um, so we're going to do, uh, she's going to do a little maintenance. We're also going to take some water samples and get do some tests from them. Show the hydrometer. We got the, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm uh, doing the salinity test uh, to, to uh, determine the salinity level and see if there's any kind of uh, If, if they're not, we'll come out here and dump some salt in the river and uh -huh. no, I'm just joking. But uh, yes, we're going to take those samples. We have a, our implement for today is an old pool uh, broom. We don't use this in our pool. This is just for the, for this project. So um, there's no chlorine or anything on it. So, and really all you're going to do is just brush the top of the net off, right? Yeah. And kind of check to make sure there's no huge like uh, conks or something down there. Yeah. Messing with our. So they're like garden beds? Yeah. Yeah, so you can see. So I'm going to go all the way to this end. Yep. And then all I'm going to do is just like sweep the nest because the, the clams burrow into the sand um, and they put their little filters up. That's like how they filter water. So uh, they put, they're they pumping sand up on top of these constantly. And then I'm also looking for predators, which I'm hopeful won't be as bad as the last clam bed we did because they put a net over the top of the clams, and in this case, they're enclosed in bags. So I'm hoping that, you know, all the um, conks and all the stuff that are going after them won't get a chance. Yeah, so we had another bed installed on this side of the dock last year, and they've, uh, they've since come and taken the nets up and the poles up, and we're hoping the clams are doing well down there, so. so I'm just brushing it off. Doesn't look too bad. No. I can see the nets. Yeah. You just, it'll um, suffocate them. Yeah. As babies, so. You can see the rectangular net right there, and then there's another one better. here. Yeah, that looks good. I can see the net really, really clearly. Okay. The, sh the shade from the dock is kind of blocking. So, there's two right here, and then there's three right here, and there's 10,000 babies in each bag. And they were probably the not even the size of an eraser top on a pencil. They're probably about half the size of an eraser top. When they, when we got them? When we got them, yeah. But you'll see when they put them in, they show all that. It's been great. The same team of people comes out week after week, you know, when they come, not week after week, but quarterly when they come. And, yeah, um, it's only a couple times during the process. They're all stoked about the program. It's really awesome. We're stoked about the program. Oh yeah. All right, so I think that's pretty good. So not too much. And then every two weeks you need to do a salinity. Uh, reading, let me do that real quick. It doesn't take long. Yeah, we'll get back with everybody after she shuffles out of the water here. And I, I was I, gonna do it right here. Oh, yeah, good idea. Yep. Oh, sorry. No, you're good. Yep. Can you hand it to me? Yeah. I don't want to walk on the net. All right, here we go. So there's like a 
like a jot form. They send, um, they have a list of instructions in the bag that comes with when you get the project. You just take a picture of it and it takes you to the form where you um, have the water. Um, so I'm just renting it out a bunch. Wait, wait, what do you mean? The form where you report your data? Where you report the salinity. Gotcha. Um, so I'm just renting this out a couple times. Um, to make it neutral? Just, it has less bubbles in it that way. Oh. And then I just fill it up all the way to the top. And then if you see on the back here, there's bubbles on that little um, pointer that are making that reading messed up. Oh, so you gotta, that's inaccurate. Yeah. you gotta poke and make sure there's not th no like air bubbles on that little pointer thing because sometimes you have to wait a little bit. There we go, got it. You'll know when you do because it, it'll, and then you put it on something flat we at? And it looks like we're at like 34 and a half, 35. Okay. Yeah, and that's about where we, we're pretty consistent here. So so that's about that's about what we do. We do that every two weeks and then um, and then you come out here every week and do a little sweep and look around. Make sure that there's no predators coming in. Oh no, there goes your bag. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle windy out here. Woo! She got it. <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to say, I bet they laminated those things for a reason. <laughs> so this is the picture. That's the picture. They have like a little QR code yep. okay. for when you report. Yep. And then all this comes with uh, instructions too. All right, cool. All right, awesome. Well, if anybody has, we're gonna go up and dry off our stuff here. <laughs> if anybody out there has any questions or comments about the um, the clams here or the Restore Our Shores program, just post down below. And be sure to check back weekly for updates on our clams. I mean, I'm sorry, no, on our clams here, but then also on our oysters. Uh, the oyster program we do through um, the Restore Our Shores program as well. All right, y'all. Until next time, everybody out there, take care. Bye.